Welcome to Production Line, a new game in the stable of games that I've been playing recently, and I thought I'd give you guys a good look at it. It is currently, I think it's 33% off in the Steam sale or something along those lines, so if you're interested, of course, uh, you can always check out Steam. Um, let's get started, shall we? So, new game. What is Production Line? Well, as you can see in the background, it's about building cars. Lots of cars. As if you're Elon Musk, except these ones actually don't get stuck in production hell. So we can start off with a few things. Let's start off with a small factory and let's go for the scenario. So it's basically telling us we've got 15 days to sell 3000 cars, of which we've got 250 expensive cars and 750 mid-range cars. Let's play the mission. And what are we going to call this? Uh, well, let's just call this the, um, hmm, Gray Motor Company. There we go. And our logo. Ooh, two different ones. That'll do. And, well, nothing much is happening. Now, if this is the first time you actually play the game, uh, what's that space bar? Good. If this is the first time you play the game, you will have some in-game tutorials. I could reset those and show those, but um, let's just walk th through things to start off with. So you have this factory layout. Some of it's locked to start with, and uh, yeah, those are going to cost quite a bit to actually buy the extensions, but we're not going to need them to start. We basically have a few different ports on the walls here. So we have the green ones, which are imports. That's where all your parts come from. And the blue ones are the exports where you can send stuff to. And you can choose wherever you want for those. Um, doesn't really much matter. So if you have a look on the here with this particular menu item, this lets us set all the slots that can fill our factory floor with whatever we want. So to get started, we're going to need a few bits and pieces. One is a resource importer. We have to put that next to a import slot like that. That will bring our materials in and think of that as being the same as electricity or anything else. You know, it just brings in resources. In this case, it's parts that are going to be coming along these crane arms. You can probably see them there. They will slide along those to wherever we want them to go to. On the export, you are going to need to put this export wherever we're going to send our completed cars back out again. We can either go down here or up there at the top. It doesn't much matter just yet which one we go for. We'll figure that out as we go. Other than that, everything in this list is roughly in the order that you need to. Well, in fact, it's all in the order from here. Sorry, from here downwards that this um, sort of hashed green, uh, sorry, yellow and black line. This is the order we need to go through and things in. So let's start out with assembly and chassis. We're going to be placing these uh, all over the factory. So let's start with, um, shall we say, here. Yeah, why not? Now the reason why I didn't put it next to the wall is, first thing we need to look at is conveyors. And I didn't know where that was. <laughs> uh, that's the conveyor slot that you've got to get stuff to from your importer to here. So in our case, we can just run something this way and something this way. Right click to get out of it. And now parts will come over here and arrive to wherever we want to. In this case, it's for slot. We're going to be producing sedans. Or saloons, as we more call them in the UK. All right. So beyond that, we then need to put uh, the body of the car together. And I'm going to leave a bit of space here because I think we're going to want multiple of these. Um, so... Uh, one space, two spaces, maybe even three. Yeah, let's put those down. And we can connect them by going to conveyor and dragging things from here. Okay, and I'm going to start the process up while that starts. Uh, while, while I put things down, you'll see it's starting to bring in parts, which are going to be starting construction into the, the body of the sedan. Oh, well, the, the chassis, the, the underside of the car, if that makes sense. This is going to fit a body on top of it, so let's keep on going while that is occurring. So, uh, one space, two, three, maybe put them three spaces apart and let's see how that, do that does. Uh, conveyor, uh, we've got like resource conveyor again, and you see now they're on the other side. <laughs> That's inconvenient, but because we have it on, um, I have left a space, it's not that it's not that bad. We can always send something around this way. Hopefully we can. And then bring it in here. 
and then continue this way there we go so the resources hopefully should go that way yes they do and now we need to pay some more conveyors all right so we've got to our third step paint I'm gonna fit an engine as well and this is gonna be too close for that so I think what we probably should do is head out this kind of export and that should do us just fine again I'm gonna go three this time I'm gonna press R to turn things and go three that way or maybe even four that way um yeah I'm not quite sure I think I found we'll go even further conveyors just as before there we go and now we have to look for the uh the resource conveyor again it's on the wrong side <laughs> okay but we can cross over the, the normal conveyors just fine so i can go from here to here and then from here down to here it's going to cost us money every time we're down to 762,000. but don't worry too much about that for this first setup i think we should be okay and uh, now we've got to think well we could actually just bring it in here actually that's a good point how much is an importer 66,000. not no and this is 1800 so i don't really want to bring in another importer just yet we'll figure out that later so we're getting our first car our first car hitting paint now and it's the unique engine next and then it's accessories so let's just bring the accessories out and bring that in there we go and resource again it's the wrong side uh but we can go cross over and go down here not sure about the throughput of that resource conveyor as well actually let's just turn the the audio down a touch uh sound effects music oh okay that. hopefully that's better let me know if you want the music up louder of course but uh that should be fine for now uh so fit accessories fine and now fit electronics okay conveyor and it's going to cross over again yep there you are okay electronics and that's nearly it we need a quality check and then an export so our export's going to have to go over here so we you can't really do anything with it until you get to the export slot which is the line itself just fine and then we need a quality check uh before that then we may well it depends how long it takes to go through the quality checks we might want a few of them we might not so let's just give it some space and uh have it like that maybe and we don't need resource collect uh, connections for these they are just fine for themselves and then let's just bring everything back over here there we go so that should be our completed production line at least for this first model of car so we can speed things up a little bit so as you can see back up here though we're making this chassis much faster than we can fit the bodies to it this actually takes a fair bit so we could uh fit get another body fitter and because you'll see the gray squares is where i need to connect to the resource um conveyor it's not going to be terribly great unless i have a space in there because we're going to need to put that in place so resource conveyor we sure can run it, run it that way and then we can run it back up here and now we have a resource conveyor for this one and we will need to have a a way of getting our cars into here so go this way and go this way and they will connect but they're heading the wrong direction they need to go that way um i need to just right click and right click again just to get rid of this to make sure we need to go from source to destination so source destination there we go some more chassis are going this way hopefully this is round robin but we'll see very shortly are you round robin yeah it's just getting stuck with this one that's diverting that's fine yeah that's pretty good actually because then we could have just one going this way as well if we had the room and time and then on the other side of this of course we do need to connect this back up again to where we want to go so uh if we have it going this way then from here back to here and the lines are all showing the path through 
So now we've got two parallel bodies or body fitters going into the paint uh, oven, which they're being constructed. Oh, well, not constructed, but painted. They'll start out grey, of course, and we get different colours coming out of the other end. And we want to probably watch out for... Ooh, next slot not found. Why is that? That's because I put the... Oh, no, I put the conveyor belt in the wrong way. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Source to destination. Do remember that. It would be nice if it had some way of uh, sort of drag selecting. Don't think so. So let's just remove them. Their cost of lots of money. <laughs> But otherwise, uh, and the reason why, of course, I had a problem going that way was I wanted to line up over here. And then going from here to here. There we go. So our first car comes off and it's going to head over to quality control where it's going to get checked. And then it's going to get exported into our showroom. And the showroom is a place really where things get sold or not, depending on how good your cars are. And again, how long does it take to pass the quality check? Let's speed things up. And where are things getting held up, if anywhere? Well, this is a backlog, so we don't have to worry too much about that. Uh, even here now, we're now queuing things up on paint, so we may well want to have an entirely parallel paint um, process going on, just so we have them coming out of this one. So that's one option we could do. A new loan is available from the bank. When you get into financial trouble, you'll find yourself here taking out a loan. Be sure to take out a loan before you actually run out of cash. Well, that's interesting whether we will actually... Um, and you can't pay them off early. That's a shame. But um, well, I actually want to pause this. What loans we've got? Uh, so 930,000, 350,000 and 360,000. Not going to worry about that too much just yet. We've got 260,000 in the bank. And we have some cars going uh, towards our uh, showroom. So that will be fine. Let's just close you go here and then look at our car stock. So if well, the tutorial will say this, but if this is full of cars, well, you, you're sort of your prices are probably too high. And if it's out of cars, then everyone's buying. So maybe you want to raise your prices a little bit. Our sale price is 19,000 per car. <clears throat> so as it's going through, we want to keep an eye on our money. And then we may want to invest into, uh, you know, extending this entire process. So we are definitely behind on the paint. And let's see, how much does another paint oven take? Oh, that's 44,000. That's not terribly bad. So if we had another one here, we could send it that way. Now we're to stockpile. Yes, I know. And then we could just... Put a conveyor directly in. Okay, we do have to put a resource conveyor, but that shouldn't be much of an issue. As we're going to get resources this way now. And then out the other side, just as we've done before. There we go. So now we have parallel paint um, sort of ovens. And once this sort of backlog is cleared, then you know we'll have we'll have more still delivering still delivering paint um, cans. Fair enough. Okay, so now we are down to two hundred and twelve thousand. And let's see if this catches up. Obviously, everything's still queued back with our chassis assembler, which is really really efficient. And we may even need more bodies and paint ovens. Depends if anything starts stacking up here. As, and the engine, the engine seems to be pretty quickly, quickly done. Yeah, you're all done. Maybe queue back a little bit, but as soon as I put a third oven in and a third body assembler, then yeah, this is going to start piling back. So unfortunately, it's sort of harder to fit the way I've chosen, and that's I guess one of the problems with uh, with production line in that you have very limited space, unlike something like Factorio, of course. So, uh, game has been autosaved, thanks very much. And we are actually gaining some money. It's just going to take a little while because we're queued back. Good work. You've achieved the Efficiency Awareness Award. We're aware of efficiency. Maybe we're not actually that efficient, though. Sustain a level of 50% production slot utilization for a single hour. Okay, fair enough. And are there other achievements? 
objectives, progress towards each objective in this scenario. Fine, so sell 3,000 cars, we've currently sold nine. Not great progress, has to be said, <laughs> and we don't have any other cars yet. Uh, as soon as we sell our tenth car, I think we get access to research, however, which lets us, um, which lets us go a little bit further in. Yeah, there we go. So uh, these, these first ones require 10 cars sold. So we then get the ability to unlock uh, fitting a roof, fitting doors, fitting a body frame, specializing the body essentially, or specializing the chassis. Paint specialization, and engine special specialization. Yeah, I'm not sure which one we should go for. Hmm. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about this. When we're zoomed out, we can see the various cars. So we're really interested in the green cars. They're all good. Yellow means they're being held up and red. Well, we don't want any red cars. So <clears throat> all of these are being held up by the paint ovens at the moment, even though we've got two parallel things here. These fit body uh, sections are still, well, they're quite slow, but uh, even so, the paint ovens are slower, or at least they are at the moment. We'll see how that goes. Let's uh, let's just increase the speed again and watch them. So it's not too terrible on this one. So maybe it's just a backlog on this first one. We'll see very soon uh, once we zoom out a little bit, see if they start to pile up. Now we can, and this is what it's going to say, to improve your cars and your factory, you'll need to do some research. Start researching by placing there some research facilities in an office area. So we can pick, let's just pause for a second, pick this and we can drop these in an office area. So we only have this one area here, so we can probably put them down. And there's our research facility. Yep. We now have researchers working for us time to choose where they should concentrate their efforts. To make research go more rapidly, you might wish to build more and more facilities if funds allow. I don't want to get lower on that funds. If we get to zero, uh, the game ends. Which means I should probably save the game at this point. <laughs> Hopefully we're not going to have that deficit over time, however. Uh, there goes another car, so hopefully that will put us back over 200. And again, let's just pause. So we aren't doing any research. So let's go into that and see what we want to do. I'm not sure it matters much to start. Um, but I would like to improve the efficiency of things. That much is for certain. Um, what will that unlock for us, however? So this is unlock capacity to import priorities. Okay, faster conveyors. It's not really conveyors we've got a problem with at the moment, is it? It's more that we have um, sort of a slow area. We have this area, this fit body is quite, quite slow by comparison to the chassis assembly. And then in turn, the paint is slow as well. Uh, we could obviously build more parallel facilities, but um, let's look into body specialization because if we can then, uh, well, let me just show this side of things. So if we go in here into this interface, you'll see there's a bunch of different status bars across the top. And what we're interested in is speeding all of those up. Now we can speed them up by breaking this fit body thing into smaller parts and having each of those parts done separately. So um, we can also upgrade the robots. That would be good. Let's see if we just research the body to start off with, shall we? So let's go into here, body specialization and research now. Okay, so that can start. And our scientists are happily shaking turquoise um, Erlenmeyer flasks, is that what they're called? I can never remember what they're called, at each other, which is corresponding to, to researching things, I guess. Um, I guess that's how you research cars. In any case, uh, we've got that research running, we've got a progress bar there. Uh, the other thing you can do if you want to plan things out a little bit more than just dropping stuff down as I have been, is just to change over to blueprint mode. So you can then see here, all the different things you can uh, plan things out here and then um, buy them all in one go as it's saying here but uh, we don't need to do that just yet but i may do in future once we start reworking the factory we're gonna need to re <laughs> this is like factorio c block but inside a building i guess we can expand but uh, quite expensive to do so okay so we are gaining a little bit and hopefully that uh, will continue to gain although it's dropping towards oh no it's dropping under 200 again Please, another car, another car sold. Yeah, there we go. So back up to 212. Okay, so uh, I'm going to skip forward a little bit uh, so that um, we can see some more progress on that research. 
Okay, and our first research is now done. Body specialization, which has unlocked fit roof, fit doors, and fit body frame. Choose next research project. Um, do we want something? Well, we have to pay them for their wages no matter what we're doing, so we should always be researching something. Um, so, uh, do we want to do anything here? I think I should probably also look into paint specialization. Um, yeah, let's just research that and get that out of the way. Um, we're down to 132. Ah, oh, no, so I did put in this other fit engine department, and that has helped things, but are now, of course, they're queuing a little bit further on, and the, the whole process has that kind of problem. Never mind. Um, so, yeah, back up to 150. Good. So now can we split this down into, um, into better steps? Can we do anything with that? Let's see. Okay, so we just got a pop-up saying that one of our competitors is using a new technology. <laughs> a car alarm. Seems like, you know, that's something that's relatively common, but no, apparently car alarms quite uh, quite rare. Okay, so that unlocks an upgrade at the fit door panel stage, but we don't have that just yet anyway. So we've got to keep going with, um, well, this is the technology research rather than the, uh, the processes research. But uh, we could add them to a queue if we wanted to. Um, for now, well, let's just leave that alone. Um, and if we have a look in the factory, we're now back up to 230. I haven't changed anything else, just waiting for that money to catch up. This second fit engine bay is actually working quite a, a good process. And of course, we've now got fit accessories that's holding things up a little bit, but mainly still back over here with a fit body. Uh, oops, let's just get rid of you. Fit body and uh, paint. So we've unlocked these extra slots that we can fit in fit body and we can now put down fit a body frame, fit roof and fit doors. And that has a bunch of different things that it will do in each one. However, this first one cost $105,000. So I wanted to wait until we had, well, a fair bit more money than, than I have at the moment, just in case. And there's our research on paint. Fine. Uh, we need to choose another research project. So again, um, engine maybe? Mm, don't need engine just yet. Um, let's see. Do we want accessories, more robots. Extra production line robots to each slot, which should actually speed things up. Well, unless you're Elon Musk. Um, <laughs> let's not make the Elon Musk jokes. Uh, and uh, yeah, let's get going. There we go. Has that started? Looks like it has. Okay, so uh, now I need to rearrange things. I'll wait until I get a little bit more money and then we'll specialize the fit body into the subcomponents and hopefully speed this bottleneck up. And then of course we'll get paint bottleneck, but that's fine. Okay, so in blueprint mode now, we need to figure out how to actually do this. So uh, let's start out by seeing how well this goes. So we have a few options here. Let's let's put things down and not spend on them. So if we have something here, how many pieces does it take? Does it, is it just going to go from one to the next? What we don't know is if um, fit body frame is going to be so much slower than everything else. So, you know, we might need multiple fit roofs, etc., just as we've done before. So I want to leave a little bit of space just in case. So fit roof and then fit doors. Uh, again, leaving a little bit of space. And then we should have enough for a conveyor to go sort of this way. Um, is that going to put things down, though? Can I just... Ah, oh, I can't put the conveyor down in anything other than that mode. Fine. Um, and is there anything else I want to do? I don't think so. How much will this cost us? 157,000. Let's go for it. Uh, buy slots to replace all currently placed blueprints when affordable. Yes, buy all. And we bought it. So we may as well see if this will work. So we'll bring stuff across here. Bring it in. Down here. Down here. And then this way. Then we're going to need a resource conveyor. So, um,. We can run them this way. That's one set connected. And the other one running this way. Okay, that's everything. And we've got 91,000 left. <laughs> 
please don't run me out of uh, run me out of money and our first go. All of that, I guess, well, that would be a spectacular end to a first episode. So let's see how fast it, it, the, these can actually process it by comparison to these. We've got things on full speed here. So is it any faster? We'll keep an eye on this slot. It's insufficient resources, but don't worry about that. So look at how fast that's gone through these three. But of course, it needs to match or exceed this fit body. Next slot not found. That's just because I've not put the uh, the conveyor in the right way. Oh, it's taking one million dollars in revenue. Thank you, I guess. But I'd really rather sort this conveyor out. There we go. Next slot not found. Oh, I need another conveyor. That should be everything. Next slot requirements not met. What's next slot requirements not met mean? Hmm. Oh, because I've, uh, <laughs> I've put it in after paint, and it it shouldn't be after paint. It should be before paint. So, oh, this is already getting a little bit spaghetti. But let's just put it this way. There we go. So aside from the long conveyor path, let's just see if everything uh, everything sorts itself out. Ideally, we want to make sure that it's faster than this and we get no backlog. OK, now research is complete. It's a more robots and we get to upgrade all slots for 64,000. Oh, this is going to sting. 64,000. And uh, does that mean everything's faster? That would be interesting. Everything is now piling up at the paint stage, which is what, what I'd expect. But it does look like on this particular section of the line, things aren't getting queued up. So we don't need parallel production for uh, you know these three. They seem to be working pretty well together. And they go through these second two phases quite quickly. In fact, so much so that we may be able to uh, just have two body frames and then one roof. Or maybe not. Maybe it's just fast enough as is. But that certainly means we don't need these spaces in between them and we can optimize those the next time through. And we're down to 63,000. So let's go and put another something on research. Uh, improved efficiency. Uh, yeah, research now. Because we get faster drying. Presumably that is uh, just for the paint. So we can relieve a little bit of the backlog there. Of course, we are going to need a third paint, which is going to need large scale rescaling, of the, uh, large scale re um, designing of this whole thing. But that's OK. Um, we are getting lots of insufficient resources, and I sort of almost want to think about putting a supply stockpile in at some point just to hold everything that we need sort of close to where it's needed. Um, in this case, maybe around here somewhere. Not sure. Yeah, see, there's there's this built in stockpile. But it'd be nice if there was one next to that as well. But it's ten thousand uh, dollars. <laughs> we don't need that just yet. A new loan's available from the bank. We could get a loan, or we could be really kind of efficient with our cash. How's our showroom looking? Uh, we're selling. I did actually go across to uh, the. How do you edit that? Go and press here. Yeah, I reduced this. It starts off at twenty percent, so I reduced it by five percent. That makes the, the cars more attractive to sell, so we get the cars selling, uh, you know, pretty quickly. We've only got one in stock with a single defect, um, so that's fine. OK, so we've got a, a starting factory up and running. I'm sure you guys who, well, if you've played it, of course, will probably be pointing out lots and lots of really bad things in the comments below. <laughs> but if you haven't, that's good, too. Our next episode, we'll explore this further and see if we can get this thing running a whole bunch more efficiently. If you like the episode, feel free to give it a thumbs up, subscribe or share. And as always, guys, thanks for watching.